Park. And uh, there was a summer camp. Uh, there mm. is always, every year there is a summer camp. And uh, in that summer camp, my mom put me. Um, first time in five years, I uh, saw what soil is. You can just imagine. Because Shivaji Park, you have all soil around you. So I just went there. And the, for the first day, I, I sat in the sand pit. There is a sand pit at, in the Shivaji Park ground. I sat there and just took the soil and poured over me. That was a soil bath, you can say. And my mother was worried. What will happen? You know, the yeah. family members and everyone uh, were worried about me. Uh, uh, but then all the 10 days of the camp went very well. And I emerged as the best student in the camp amongst the 2,000 gymnasts or 2,000 athletes that had participated in, in that camp. And uh, that was how sports was introduced in my life. But then there are certain rules and regulations that if you get 60% and above in the camp, uh, certain groups like gymnastics, there was a gymnastic group, there was kabaddi, there was kho kho, a lot of, lot of sports involved. So the gymnastics crew uh, spotted me and they invited me to be a part of the gymnastics group. And this is how gymnastics uh, came into my life. And I got... So Oh, we are glad that your mom took the decision to send you to the camp, you know, because we have got a gem. Uh, it, I would say that the gem has been, you know, polished at the camp. Yeah, maybe, yes. <laughs> so we are glad that your mother took that decision and, you know, you you went so high in your life. Um, so moving on, ma'am, uh, what, was, what was the affecting factor of transferring from artistic gymnastic to rhythmic uh, gymnastic? So artistic gymnastics, we have, you know, a certain kind of apparatus called as balancing beam, floor exercise, mm -hmm. water parts, and uneven bars. And you tend to have, uh, you know, extremely high level of strength to do that sport. Mm -hmm. uh, you can just call it as an anti-gravity sport, wherein, you know, you have to jump, go tumble, do the somersaults and everything. And I was really good at it, of course. I was a national uh, medalist uh, till junior level. And uh, suddenly in 2005, uh, uh, I took this decision of transferring from artist to rhythmic because um, this sport, as we gradually increase uh, the level of difficulty, uh, we require help from the coaches. And the coaches need to lift us up, do mm. some movement with us, and then keep us down, you know, to understand the movement of the body difficulty that we have to perform. So at that time, I had female coach uh, with me. And uh, as we grew up, it was very difficult for the female coaches to lift us up. And there are very limited male coaches uh, who, you know, train female gymnasts in our country. So uh, uh, looking up to that, uh, my coach took a decision of, you know, just attending one competition at Melbourne Commonwealth Games, which was rhythmic gymnastics competition. And when she saw that, she thought of, uh, you know, why don't I uh, ask my gymnast to, to get transferred from artistic to rhythmic? And uh, she put the proposal to me. Uh, I was good at rhythmic gymnastics because the, uh, the points that I could uh, collect were, I am a good dancer because my mom had put me uh, into classical dance at the age of seven. So rhythmic gymnastics needs something as dance, gymnastics, presentation, uh, you know, all those kind of skills that a girl is into. And it's a mm -hmm. woman-oriented sport completely. So right. I was good at both dance as well as gymnastics. And so I took the decision of um, transferring from artistic to I think it was a, a perfect combination of the two. You know, it's when I when I saw your videos for, of your of you performing, it's just visually so appealing to see you. You know, you performing uh, rhythmic gymnastic as well. So it's it's a beautiful combination of of the two, very different uh, kind of you know um, uh, activities. I would say. Uh, so you have been doing so much. You were a gymnast. Uh, then you moved to become a coach and now you're also an FIG judge. So how was this transition from a sports person to a coach and to finally an FIG judge? Okay, so I was never going to be a coach uh, and I was never going to continue uh, into sports as a coach or a judge. It was never my plan. 
Uh, after my Commonwealth Games, uh, when I retired from the sport, um, I wanted to pursue civil services and uh, become a, a civil servant and go into the administration. But then opportunities, you know, opportunities come the way it, it had to. And I just took that opportunity. I started my own Phoenix Gymnastics Academy at Thane after my retirement. And then once you start, once you get that responsibility, you have to go through it. So I started uh, giving examinations for the international coaching examination as well as the international judging examinations. When I gave the coaching examination, I stood around third in the world for my first FIG level one. And uh, it was pretty much uh, very much interesting for me. And uh, I was glad that I could, you know, take all the knowledge that actually the international world is following because in India, we still lack of that knowledge. And uh, I was lucky enough to get an opportunity to represent India, to acquire that knowledge and then to transfer it to my kids. My kids, I mean to say my gymnasts, okay? So I always refer them as my kids because they, uh, I have generally brought them up uh, from the age of four till date. So uh, it's, it's a bond. And as I went through it, I understood that uh, unless and until you know how the gymnastics scoring is done in the competition and how points have been awarded to the gymnasts, uh, it won't be fair enough for me to, uh, you know, uh, take my gymnast to the international level and uh, ask them to perform because you need to have the knowledge of a judge as well. So I gave the international judging examination and, and uh, I understood how I have to choreograph the routines to get the points, to get the marks. And ultimately, I got the highest, um, you can say highest marks from the country. I got category one marks and uh, in both individual and group and i am the highest awarded judge uh, of the country wow that's that's wonderful uh, so ma'am uh, you you established phoenix uh, gymnastic academy uh, what i need to understand from you that how important is it you know a, a grassroots development is for a sports like gymnast and was uh, that one of the motive of, of starting uh, phoenix gymnastic academy Okay, so I have two questions, I suppose. So first, I will answer the first half that why a grassroots is important. Right. So uh, I would like to explain this with an example. Uh, well, foundation, okay. So we see that when a builder starts building, okay, he puts more focus on the foundation and then starts constructing the building, right? The foundation... Right. A lot of time to be constructed but once it is constructed then you can see a tower develop above it very easily so just imagine what will happen if this foundation is only not strong hmm. the building will collapse right right so first see the vision how tall you want to construct the building that means how much you want to grow in your life and accordingly calculate how much stronger your foundation should be. So in sport, the, this foundation is the grassroots training. How important it is. Right. right. So most countries want to be able to perform competitively, earn medals during the international sporting competitions. But is this possible without a strong foundation? No. So the ability to compete at high level stems from strong training programs and accessibility to the youth sport. Mm -hmm. We have a huge population in our country of say 136 crores approximately. Okay. Right. What do you think? Is it our strength or it's our weakness? So I just want to uh, have a quick answer from you. What do you think, Maria? Is the population our strength or weakness? It's obviously our strength, I would say. Yes, of course. And even I think that it's our strength because uh, an example comes in. So when I start training about 100 gymnasts at a basic level, mm. I have 10, 10 out of 100 reaching the elite level. Mm. So we have grassroots training program for about 136 crores of people 
then just imagine the 10% of it that is 13.6 crore elite athletes will be made which may take up different sporting events and excel in them it will be much easy for us to win the competition in different sports earning a lot of medals so it's right. that's right yes accessibility to the youth there is a need to train the athletes on and off the competition fields to create healthy lifestyles to make the youths physically and mentally fit so grassroots trainings teaches us to lead a healthy lifestyle reaching out to the youth at the community and the school levels also educates their mm. own families and increases their physical activity level mm. the governments around the world have been focusing on improving sports for all policies that is sports regardless of the age regardless of the number this is the sports for all policies and their youth sports policy so we have two different policies so these initiatives have been important in improving the community health the physical activity levels and the community involvement into sports now speaking yeah. about our country recently our government has taken up many such activities as a part of fit india movement hmm. in lockdown where most of the world has been affected by such an adversity we have turned this adversity into an opportunity our government has not only reached the cream crowd but accessibility was given to the rural areas as well mm -hmm. we had an online athlete development and coaching program run by our ministry of sports and youth affairs uh, the sports authority of india for athletes as well as the coaches of our mm -hmm. country and we had appointed you know many experts from all over the world uh, federation international gymnastics asian gymnastics union experts who came in and who have been giving training to the various athletes irrespective of the sporting disciplines so there are about 18 sports that the uh, government had conducted online sessions for and i was lucky enough and honored enough to be appointed as the program director for gymnastics grassroots development program i try to reach out many i try to hear out many i helped many and i am of the opinion that uh, gymnastics that to be the mother of all sports so if you learn gymnastics then you can do anything and uh, slowly and slowly i got to know that many of the kids of like all over india have taken up gymnastics after our sessions and we are i think we are slowly climbing each step towards stronger and fitter and thanks to the sector i i i i i just can't you know differ from your point of view that gymnastic is yeah. one of the sports that if you learn that you will be able to do anything yeah. it gives so much of flexibility to you you know and i i would say that it's not just about sports but also to maintain a healthy lifestyle and have a proper you know mental health as well such kind of sports and activities are so important you know uh i think before we move ahead for the audience we have a short video of uh, pooja ma'am where uh, she is for of her performance at uh, commonwealth uh, games uh, it's a ribbon performance and i think it's beautiful so before we move ahead in the conversation let's quickly have that video we'll just have that short video Maria, I think I'm on the spotlight, and uh. <laughs>
So that was Pooja Ma'am performing in one of the Commonwealth, and I, I have, I'm sure the audience would agree with me that it was such a beautiful performance. Your posture, your poise, your elegance is so beautiful to to watch. Um, uh, moving ahead in this conversation, uh, Ma'am, um, we all agree uh, to the importance of commercialization of sports. Uh, what business plans uh, do you have to promote your academy and and the game? Of course, uh, so important of commercialization, right? So uh, every sport person needs a combination of various factors to excel, like great facilities, great talent, good marketing skills. And today's competitive world has brought to fore the need for sports management and sports entrepreneurship. So these mm. are the things that we have recently come up with. And there is so much more that is what we require is a team, a league, an arena, a manager, a promoter uh, for the development of one sports person. Like to reach from the uh, grassroots to the international level, we need a team, an entire team, right? Right. So there is a multitude of opportunities as an entrepreneur in sports. We have a lot of opportunities. Mm -hmm. And rhythmic gymnastics no doubt requires a lot of discipline and rigor as a professional. However, mm -hmm. it definitely needs the risk-taking ability of an entrepreneur coupled with the vision of a mentor. So what I see is you have a lot of opportunities you can commercialize in sports. A right direction is needed and uh, speaking about some points that I can tell you is one is the pyramidic growth that is hmm. you know you have a pyramid you right. teach you teach 10 people then these 10 people go and teach the next 10 the next 10 the second is the e-representation or the digital media that we are using currently we can't reach out to you say different states or different countries at a time but when we are using the digitalization, we can easily reach to thousands and crores of people through one media. Mm -hmm. And of course, the infrastructure by the local governance. That is, wherever I am supposed setting up an academy, I need, uh, you know, the support from the local governance for the infrastructure, for the stadium, for the academy, for the yeah. so anything needed. So these are the three points in which we. From your side, I I sorry. I think there was some audio problem. I couldn't hear what you said. Yes. So, so these are the three things: that is the parametric growth, the e-representation of your skills, the or the virtual uh, media that we use nowadays, and the infrastructure by the local governance. So this is how uh, uh, I started my academy in two thousand and twelve. And today, after eight years of eight or nine years of the establishment, I can surely say that my academy is one of the best in India. We have, uh, you know, uh, of course, it's it's a proud feeling for me because I was the only one to start with, and um, of course, I was backed by my parents and my sister, who is my strongest support, you can say, and. Uh, uh, today we have created records not only at the national level but at the international level. Uh, we have got all the five gold medals that were there in the Kilo India competitions, which is organized by the by our Prime Minister and Sports Authority of India. 
and uh, it seemed that uh, we have climbed one level higher at the internationals also where my gymnast uh, saita she uh, uh, got selected for the apparatus finals in the asian championships and today india's flag is recognized amongst the best eight countries of the asian continent and that is because of her so i'm really proud that we could you know uh when we started we had nothing we had seriously we had nothing and today we have been the best in the country so i'm really proud i'm sure it's 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 there this you must be having so much sense of pride you know when you see your uh students or your see your kids do so well and represent you know you have been representing your our country and then yeah. to see your kids also representing that way and bringing you more and more pride i'm sure that must be really really a, a proud moment for you my next question to you can be a little little mean but i would still want to ask you this that you know you have won so many prestigious awards you were part of so many competitions which has been your most a uh, memorable one I, i know it it is difficult to select but i would want to know that okay so there are many such things uh, but that if you are asking me i guess i can say uh, the commonwealth games 2010 uh, was the major event of my life because in 2007 i was playing national games at assam and i had an injury uh, where where uh, people are like you know after the injury gymnastics has become a little difficult for a person to pursue but then uh, i i had just heard in 2007 that we will be having 2010 commonwealth games hosted by india and uh, it will be at delhi and uh, i was like i have been into this field for so many years and it will be really unfair on my part if i don't represent my country when the competition is in my country so i i was like you know for the for after my injury i was like sitting with my dad i was discussing we had uh, uh, you know kind of a good and a long discussions through many months that is it okay that if i continue or no and uh, ultimately there are also you know criticizers who keep on saying that acha injury to ho gaya hai ab kya khelegi and you know all that all those kind of stuff but then i let go off and uh, i i said i was determined uh, my will power because of my will power and because of the lord almighty the pain that my mom took after the injury because it's it it was a whole process to start again from the basics to reach to the nationals after the injury so uh, i prepared myself enough for the commonwealth games but in between i got bonus of like you know Play, representing the country of for the world championships for the world cups so that was a bonus for me i was preparing for commonwealth but 2008 2009 i had many internationals to represent for and finally after 3 years india camp after 3 years uh when i was on the podium in my own country hometown and i was like wow this is the moment i was waiting for and i had no words i can't explain the feeling but it was a huge responsibility as well as uh and happy like a happy moment wherein i feel proud of myself i suppose even my parents must be feeling proud of their daughter and uh, it, it's 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 a feeling that can't be expressed i'm sure i mean to represent your own country in your own country has must have been a wonderful experience uh you have achieved the highest award a sports person can achieve shri shiv chhatrapati award how is the selection process for the same uh the selection process for the shri shiv chhatrapati award is a bit uh, tough because you need to have uh, a five senior nationals so even if you are playing from a very young age you have to have played minimum five senior nationals in the senior category and those the nationals should have been uh, registered through the federation that is uh, if i have uh, gymnastics as a sport then gymnastics federation of india registered five senior nationals 
okay the highest uh, medals are like we have points for the medals that is if i get a gold i have say 30 points if silver then 20 and if it's a bronze it's 10 so those kind of points are calculated and the highest point winner in the entire country or in the state will be awarded as Sri Shiv Chhatrapati. So this is a long process wherein you have to, you know, do a tapasya of uh, not only for one year or two year, but you know, a certain period, long period. And in this way, uh, if you are, if you get the highest points, you are awarded the award. Yeah, you, you know, you're right. You, you use the term tapasya. Yes, it's a kind of dedication that you have to give, you know, to all these kind of uh, sports. Uh, so in, in this journey of yours, uh, we know that your sister, uh, you know, your support system has been your sister that you have mentioned and your parents. Uh, you and your sister are famously known as the uh, Surrey sisters. Mansi, if I'm not wrong, is your sister's name. What was uh, what has been the moment of your life when you made your family and yourself proud? So uh, it's like uh, uh, when uh, when I started the gymnastics academy, I didn't know that uh, my sister was also going to be a part of gymnastics. She used to do gymnastics, but then uh, she had dropped for some or the other reason. Uh, but later, when I started, she joined again. And uh, she was uh, she was practicing very hard for the national competitions. She became a national championship national medalist. Then she did uh, the FIG international judging course with me. Wherever I lack, to be frank mm -hmm. enough, wherever I lack, she lifts me up. She fills that gap. And then the combination of me and Mansi becomes a unique combination. The the execution is so different because I am a very logical person. I, I am a very practical and logical person. Whereas Mansi is very artistic. Uh, the finesse, uh, the the art that the sport requires is, is you know, tools, tools ke hai usme. So we say that, that she has that inborn ability. And then mm -hmm. the combination of both of us, we have a beautiful executed performance. So I can say that wherever I stop, wherever I lack, my sister lifts me up and we give the best to the country. I'm sure you, you both your sisters are making us proud, I must say. Um, so what role has been your favorite? Uh, you've been a sports player, you've been a coach, a competition director, sports broad broadcasting, commentary. So you've done it all. And now you're an entrepreneur. So which of these many roles has been your favorite? I, I don't want to, you know, uh, distinguish amongst anything or discriminate any role of mine. I love all my roles, to be frank, as a player, as a coach, uh, as a judge. But then I feel that uh, as a player, I was much, uh, I did not have that responsibility, uh, that much responsibility when I was a player. Now, as a coach, as a judge, when I'm handling the academy, I have much more responsibilities. Uh, I have about, you can say, I have 500 gymnasts in my academy. I have to look for each one. Earlier, for as a sports person, I was the only one to look after. But now, 500 kids and 500 families. Because when I teach, I need to know each family personally. Right. So this is how the responsibility has increased. Yes. Mm -hmm. And I, uh, yes, and I think I love all my roles. As I progress, I will get I think so many other roles, and I will be glad to you know perform each and every role very very nicely because i am a person like whatever i take up i do my best in it so i think whatever comes my way i will work hard and smart and go through it that's it we see that in your work whatever you do it's it's perfect uh um so I think uh, before we move ahead, uh, there's another very short video that we have of Pooja Ma'am's performance at a Commonwealth game uh, where she's performing with the hoop. So we'll quickly have that video and see Ma'am's performance before we move ahead in the conversation. Mm -hmm. 
20 years of age, Puya Shuve. India fielded its first team in the 2006 Commonwealth Games and placed seventh. Very confident stride onto the platform. Runner-up in the Indian National Championships all round this year, won gold in the rope apparatus final. See how she does here with the hoop. We are Srinivas Survey. She was a winner of the 2008 uh, dance reality show in India. Prides herself on being a good entertainer. And she started off well. Looking for a career in Bollywood. And she might get it. Double Shane turn underneath that throw. is very appreciative of all the little uh, tricks as the gymnasts perform them, all the skills. Here's a balance. A well-performed routine, no major errors. Well, she was enthusiastic and so were the uh, Indian supporters at ringside here at the Indira Gandhi Stadium. Double turn. Could have held the leg a little bit longer in its position. Akshada Shete, 18 years of age. There's the score for the previous uh, Indian performer. Beautiful. I just, something that I can just, just that comes to my mind is simply beautiful. Um, so moving on. Um, you said the record of being the highest Indian scorer in the judging examination. How many hours did you study? What is the secret to being such a smooth multitasker? No, that, that's, no, no, no. But then that, that's a, that's a, you know, uh, I don't know how did I score that much, but then it was a huge, uh, there's, a, there's a story behind it, actually speaking. Uh, you know, we need to send an entry through the Federation, in, uh, Gymnastics Federation of India for this uh, judging examinations and when uh, my entry was sent I hardly had any days to prepare myself for this judging exam and uh, I quickly put all the books in my bag because I think in two days I had to leave for the examination and uh, when I put all the books in my bag uh, I, I went to the Malindo uh, Airlines and uh, my flight took off I landed in Malaysia and when I asked uh, about my baggage, I couldn't see it because they had offloaded my baggage, me and Mansi both. So they had offloaded my baggage and all the books were in that ba uh, bag. So I said, oh no, now what should I do without this? So it's a course of seven days. And then uh, we went there. We were studying without books. Trust me, it's very difficult. We were just sitting there and studying without books, just marking on all the points that I could do. And uh, uh, later, after two days, my baggage arrived. I started studying whole night, whole day. We did not have anything else to do. I did not even eat. I did not even spend time.
to have any uh, you know uh, to watch something or to talk to my parents because we were in different countries so i just kept studying 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 and finally the day arrived for the examination i gave it and uh, the result was announced after a month and a half and when i was when it was announced going to get announced i was like praying to god that i must pass the exam please oh god and then when it showed off i was the highest so that's how it all happened oh my god <laughs> that is that is actually some story i must say <laughs> Okay, ma'am. There are just a few questions that we have received from our audience. Maybe we can quickly take up those questions. Um. So the very first question that we have is your take on the Olympic twenty twenty organization during these times and the qualification of gymnasts to summer Olympics. Okay. I'm sure so, the times are difficult. A lot of you know sports industry has seen uh, sports being organized in such a different way. So what is your take about it, ma'am? So I think uh, uh, 2016 uh, we had Deepa Karmakar who qualified for the Olympics, and it was a surprise uh, for each and every one of us. And we were really proud of that moment wherein Deepa qualified. Nandi sir took that effort, and uh, it's a memorable, memorable Olympics for all of us. But then after those four years, we were expecting someone else to come in. and we have a surprise of praniti naik also getting qualified for the olympics for 2021 i won't say 2020 because it's been 2021 tokyo olympics right now okay. and uh, it's it's very difficult for her to prepare very difficult because one and a half year she's just been sitting and working only for the fitness now mm. sports authority of india has uh, and the indian olympic association has uh, made a separate group of olympians for their training they've been called to the national centers and they've been given trainings of their choice whichever center they would prefer for the coaches are there and they are getting yeah. trained but a period of one month is not enough after a break of one and a half so it's going to be i think uh, difficult for everyone whoever is participating in at the olympics but uh, especially for india because it's a developing country it's not yet developed and uh, i suppose that she does well and i hope that we all are there to support her of course whatever she needs she may ask anything and we are there for gymnastics so any gymnast of the country any sports person of the country anyone who approaches me i am really there i am available for all of you so i would say that yes we are hoping that she also makes us proud uh you share that you have been into online coaching so uh, we have a question as uh, how effective is online coaching and what measures have you developed to train budding gymnasts and help them achieve their goals okay so uh, in in feb february or march i think so march 2020 uh, 14th i remember the date also 14th march 2020 we had to shut down our gyms just because of this corona and the pandemic that was happening and uh, nobody knew how long it is going to take for the gyms to restart right so immediately on the 16th of march i found out that zoom online trainings can be taken and i blindly i just started with it i was i think i was the first one to start zoom online gymnastics training in the country so about 500 gymnasts you can say joined my online sessions we did it for about 2 months uh, mm -hmm. the training and then we stopped for a while because uh, even i was you know we are not used to the virtual world the sports persons are always uh, better to be seen on field rather than the virtual things so uh, my eyes started paining because i was just sitting like this ah you must do this you must do that no your leg is not correct and all sort of ex, uh, you know explanations and instructions virtually but then uh, this uh, at least made the gymnast uh, kept the gymnast physically fit and into the game uh, i i can say that all my gymnasts whoever attended uh, did not uh, get bored of anything other other gymnasts or other uh, athletes or maybe i don't know about them but yeah. other kids who were not into sports they were complaining their parents that i'm bored i don't know what to do i have just the school 
I have nothing to do. I am sitting at home. I don't know. And they were bored. But I can say the athletes who ever participated in the online events, I had different competitions for them. We did online competitions. We did, uh, you know, costume designing competition, music finding competition. We did uh, apparatus competition. Who can design the apparatus well? And, you know, all sort of things. And uh, I think it made uh, the sessions really interesting and kept the gymnast busy in whatever they were doing. So after a year and a half also, when they have started, just started with their training, they're physically fit, mentally fit and into the sport till date, I can say that. Yes, yes, you are right. I, I, would, I mean, yeah, the times are difficult, but we need to, we need, we can't stop, you know. So even if if it's online, I am, I'm sure uh, it is difficult, whether it be, I, I can totally relate to you when you and say that. I would like to add that the parents of these gymnasts, whoever, because we were doing home training, right? right. So the parents of these gymnasts were also involved in it. They were trying to help me out by taking the stretchings, you know, pushing the gymnast, uh, putting the leg here. When I say, no, it's not one, it's 170, it's not 180, you have to take the leg here. And the parents used to, you know, with all sort of their household work, they used to keep that. And for the two hours, they used to sit with their kids, get involved. They also understood how much pain, because in the right. academy, they're not allowed. But here, they could see how much pain uh, the coach is putting in, the gymnasts are putting in and it was all a team effort, I can say. Very true. Uh, you were also a commentator. So how is your commentating experience with uh, with uh, Star Sports? Uh, it was really great. Uh, uh, 2016 was uh, like super for me. And uh, till that time, I didn't know that I could commentate also for anything. Because, you know, for a player, it's very difficult to speak. It's very yes. easy to put on gymnastics, but very difficult to speak. But then uh, uh, I went through certain kind of trainings. Star Sports was really, uh, you know, uh, they helped us a lot in getting this process uh, through. And uh, I had Vikas uh, who uh, helped me as a mentor, uh, how to speak, what kind of language should to be used and everything. And... Uh, it was fun. I can, I can say it was fun. Uh, go, like going, seeing the huge screen of Star Sports, going, going into that uh, arena. It's a different world, totally different world, but it was a great experience for me. A uh, gymnast, I would say, is still something which needs, uh, you know, a lot of parents are still very skeptical about. It's It still needs that kind of fan following. So we have this one question uh, from our audience who's asking you, how can we improve fan following for this game and what will help in popular popularizing it in India? So, uh, what we follow is we have kind of demonstrations of gymnastics uh, personally and uh, I would now say that since uh, we are in a virtual world, we must have more kind of uh, virtual presentations for the world which can be displayed on YouTube, the Facebook, Instagram and get connected through it. Uh, maybe uh, we could have a gymnastics competition displayed on the television more and uh, let's make it more glamorous we can say. Uh, because we have other sports uh, like Kabaddi and Kho Kho. They were not, I think, uh, Kabaddi, we have Kabaddi Pro Leagues, right? Badminton right. Pro League. Uh, you know, uh, these sports have been reaching through the uh, television world to many of the audiences. But gymnastics is something like it needs that uh, kind of exposure. And if uh, everyone uh, sets up that goal of, uh, you know, having good exposure for gymnastics, I think it's possible now. That's very true. I totally agree with you. I think the way we have seen with Pro Kabaddi leave the league, uh, the scene change for Kabaddi, I think definitely it is something that we can do with gymnastics as well. Uh, there's this one question from the audience. Um, was asking you, uh, can you suggest some ways athletes can manage both sports and studies at the same time? Sports and studies at the same time, right? Yes. Okay, so it's uh, it's too simple. It, it doesn't require that much uh, high level of knowledge or technique. But you just need to follow time management. That is how I have done. Mm -hmm. 
my schedule was getting up 4:30 a.m. in the morning. Uh, five o'clock, I was in the gym for the practice. So five to seven was my practice. Seven thirty was my school. Seven thirty when I finished my school, it was about twelve thirty. I used to come home. One to two was my lunch break. From two to four, I used to study regularly at home. No tuitions because tuitions require a lot of time, and I think personally, I think that it wastes your time. So personal studies are more important. So two to four, I used to study. Immediately, I used to have some snacks. Four thirty, I used to go for practice. Seven thirty, finish, and then come home, have your dinner, relax. You know, you have time for everything then. Right. You need to learn to multitask. I think it is manageable. It's not something that you cannot do. So it's up to you whether you want to do it. You you can definitely achieve it. And and yeah. I would say Pooja Ma'am is a live example that we have <laughs> amongst us. Uh, Ma'am, uh, what according to you are the key skill sets required to succeed in any field? All right, I think uh, there is some network issue on Pooja Ma'am's side. I think she has dropped. Let me very quickly check. With her, um, so till the time Pooja Ma'am joins us back, I think we have one short video. Uh, we'll just play that video and have a look at it, and uh, and I think in the meantime, Pooja Ma'am will join us back. So if you can have the video, please. About 90. Well, it's 91.375. Possible sixth position. Maybe even fifth. Maybe even fifth. And Survey needs to soak this up. I think this is the last time she'll perform in front of a crowd so large as this that's right behind her. gymnast from India. She's performed well. She's met all her expectations. And the girls and the boys from India have improved so much in gymnastics over the last four to eight years. Yes, so Pooja Ma'am has joined us back. One of the difficulties of the online sessions. Okay, so now I was asking you um, what according to you are the uh, key skill sets which are required to succeed in any field? So uh, it, it's not, uh, uh, I think, uh, it's not something high level science that, that you need some skills, but then the most important thing is that 
uh, you must be sincere enough. Uh, you must work hard, and uh, you must work smart. Okay. Right. It shouldn't be that uh, just keeping like keep working, working, and working, and uh, you're not able to figure out something. No, you must work smart. You must have some goals. uh you and you have to go slowly you have to take each step you can't just bypass that step and you know reach success so the one who does all these steps and goes up to the highest and reaches their goal i think uh, that person is the most successful one and uh, it's not that difficult to reach once you set once you make up your mind uh it's it's very very easy to uh, reach uh, towards your goals so i think it, it's it's simple yes agreed uh one last question ma'am before i let you go how important do you think is formal education in sport industry and a piece of advice uh for the budding sports manager that you have okay so uh i don't know why this uh, uh topic of uh, studies has been a uh, you know highlighted so much because uh personally speaking it is like education it can be the mainstay of any stream of course but um i don't think that it is compulsory it is a must i don't think at all uh we have uh, many such examples of sports persons who have not uh, studied so much who have been just 9th pass or 10th pass or 12th grade pass and still they are world champions uh they have made history for the country uh, i can just give an example of sachin tendulkar the like he's he's been the god in the field of uh, you know cricket and uh, i i always have this question coming up from the parents uh whoever my gymnasts are i i have an experience of this uh, my my child is into 9th standard and she's into 10th standard and i need a break uh i don't think that the kids need any break for this are you able to hear me out yes 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 ma'am you're audible Uh, Pooja ma'am. Pooja ma'am, uh, can you hear ma me? Yes, I can hear you. Can yes. you hear me? Yes. Okay. So, uh, the question is like, however, like undue, exaggerated focus on the rigid uh, system of this formal education is more a deterrent than a facilitator because I think. education is an asset but it is not must okay and uh, education undoubtedly is important for every individual but it has no but it has to complement whatever you are learning it has, mm -hmm. has to complement in your life correct and budding talent and promising youngsters should be encouraged and supported with that kind of flexible education systems not like the usual and the regular process of studies like you go sit in the class study for 6 hours then you have your tuitions you have to study this you have to do your homework when will the child get time to practice when will the child make miracles in what the child is liking so it should be flexible enough and i think uh, rather than being a formal rigid system of education i think uh, the the kid can opt if he is liking something sports then he can opt a sports uh, related education and not something like to become an engineer or a medical student or something like that and i think nasm is doing that fantastic job for the sports person that they have started the sports management institute and many of my gymnasts trust me when i said that an nasm is going to take interview and they going to get me on board and my my gymnasts were like tai I am going to go to NASM for my sports management studies. I don't want to go into the formal science work or the medical work to become a doctor, engineer. But yes, sports management is something that I like, and I would like to do do something in it. 
so this is how it is thank you uh, thank you pooja ma'am for those wonderful words uh it was lovely to have the opportunity to chat with you today i'm sure everyone who is watching and the budding sports manager would have got an insight uh, insightful information and knowledge about the sports industry and are highly motivated thank you once again so much for joining us and giving us your time thank you thank you maria thank you the entire panel of nasm the director and your members ashwin zai it was really nice uh, having me on board and i'm really honored for such a beautiful uh, interview that you have taken i hope that uh, i would like to say some words for uh, our budding uh, enthusiasts or you know uh, the ones who are watching me of course uh, i would like to say that uh, everyone must know their strengths and weaknesses and you must enlarge your strengths and reduce your weaknesses uh so it's like enlarging the former and reducing the latter never find faults within your luck or tools but always engage yourself in doing right things in right place and in right time never forget that good aims are not sufficient and they must be achieved by noble means so you know you whenever you have good in your heart and you spread good amongst everyone it will come back to you so be nice be happy enjoy every moment of your life don't take stress at all because this world is a competitive world don't run behind everything just stay focused stay calm and things are automatically going to come your way so whatever comes grab the opportunities don't let it run away from you and keep enjoying keep smile on your face and face the world that is what i can say thank you so much for those wonderful words ma'am once again thank you very much for joining us today uh, we will be having more such sessions which will help us learn more about the sports industry and the next one that we have lined up is an admission uh, webinar which is uh, which is going to be for the budding sports uh, managers who wants to take up sports management as a career for further updates follow our social media handles nkc and nasm and stay tuned to know more about such live sessions and webinar before we say a goodbye we would like to thank dr ansi jos uh, ma'am for her vision and opening the doors in rising career in sports management to the youth we wish to express our sincere gratitude to you pooja ma'am we would also like to thank the entire team at nasm for making this happen a big thanks to all the attendees today uh, today's sessions for their kind presence and for sending some very interesting questions we wish you all all the very best in your careers stay home and stay safe thank you once again thank you bye everyone